So here we're at Mapo Botswana, we're heading up to the Cylinder Reserve. We're down in the southeastern part of the Akavanga Delta and we're going to hit these cut line roads. Very straight roads, come out of this four-way junction, which is over here. Come down the cut line to Quora and then we're going to go up the Vumbra cut line and end here. We're going to leave the vehicle here and we're going to canoe down the Cylinder Spillway all the way to Cylinder Camp. So we met, we met at Duba, huh? Duba Plains many years ago. Who knows, 2014, 15, and um, we ended up arriving at the Cylinder Spillway, at Cylinder Explorers Camp. And um, we mentioned that one of the most amazing things to do would be to canoe the full length of the Cylinder Spillway. Then it had been done, but it was drying up as far as I remember. I don't think it was happening as frequent and the water wasn't deep enough because what was happening is the water would flow in from the west and by the time it got to the east it would already be drying in the west so you could actually never do the full length of the spillway I don't think I could probably say I would know of four groups of people that have canoed the full length of the cylinder spillway I've done it I've canoed the full length of the spillway four times. Um, the reason why many other people haven't is because it's, it's quite a long journey. You know, you look on a map, it works out to be about 52 miles in a straight line, but it meanders a lot. So you think your next goal is two or three miles away or four or five kilometers away, but it actually is another three hours on top of that because of the, the the meandering so I'd, I think it's everyone's dream if you've done it before to do it as many times as possible so all of a sudden this year sorry last year all of a sudden last year November the rain started and they started and they didn't stop and the rains fell and the rains fell and it just carried on raining and we usually get 450 millimeters of rain and it just kept raining and it kept raining and actually the rainwater that landed in the northern part of Botswana in October all the way through to February was bigger than last year's super flood so what happened is that choof, all of a sudden every single channel every single river system just all of a sudden started flowing and um, I just obviously thought it's time to do the cylinder spillway again because the water coming in now the flood coming in from Angola now is is tiny it's small 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 and I don't believe we'll be able to canoe the full length of the spillway even by August I think the water is going to drop incredibly fast so if we didn't get this rain we would never be able to canoe the full length of, of this the spillway the, the, the water will give it a little bit of depth but it, it's going to drop in incredibly fast so I knew there was somebody out there that was interested in doing the spillway <laughs> so I contacted you okay you know where we are <laughs> uh, it should say yeah. I'm here yeah so this, if you look at the, the map of Botswana this is the Maremi game reserve this green part so that's an official game reserve we've come from Maon which is down this section we come around here, we didn't turn left to go to Southgate because this whole area is flooded. So we moved around here, followed the white road all the way, stayed at Mohoto camp. Come around here, we just crossed the white bridge and now we Northgate Maremi Game Reserve. And where are we going? We're going to stay here tonight and then we're going north where no maps exist. Going six hours? Six hours to the north, yeah. And there's nothing between here and there? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Wild backcountry until we hit the cylinder spool. And it's, it's beautiful. Whereas we're going through this thick mopani, thick bush, thick bush, and you feel like you're going to suffocate. And all of a sudden you drive out and there's a away and it's like... <laughs> Enjoy 
And what's at either end of the spillway? Either end of the spillway is Zibli Angel Lagoon is at the end and the western side is the Arcavango Delta. So this is the Arcavango Delta branch and what happens is all the water congregates into one river and heads off to the mouth of the Savuri Channel, Zibli Angel Lagoon. Cylinder Spillway only flows timely due to the fact of the amount of volume that actually comes down, the amount of water that comes down from Angola. This year we've had localized rains of up to about 1,500 millimeters and that's why the cylinder spillway is flowing. By August we won't be able to canoe here anymore because the water would have dried up and there's a very low flood coming in to the system from Angola. Good news is I heard that there's a truck ahead of us. Oh good. There's a supply truck ahead of us so they will, if there's any trees that have fallen down, they are going to move them from us. So they will stop any kind of sort of unnecessary delay. Because no one has driven that road since I drove it about oh, three weeks ago. And if there's any elephants that have knocked down trees across that road, that would, could delay us for up to 30 minutes, or an hour, depending on the size of the tree. And you have a saw, you said, right? I've got a saw. Just in case. Sprayed. But um, yeah, they've, they've gone ahead, so they would have cleared the road for us, which is fantastic. And if we get really stuck, we know they're coming back, so they're going to have to pull us out. No, that's right. Yeah, so we know <laughs> they got to get by it's us. Always, it's always good to have a, another vehicle in the area. It does yeah. help. How'd you find out that they had a truck? They, got, they sent up. me a message saying that there's a truck ahead of us. Also, the guys from Pioneer. Yeah, they said there's the their supply truck was supposed to come a few days ago, but it was delayed, and it's it's arriving today. So, um, so follow the tracks. So they'll be ahead of us. Yeah. All right. Koto gabo malo mirame. That's fixing the road sign so it reads correctly. Now it means precise at right. <laughs> The Salinda Spillway, here we go. She's a beauty. This is what it's all about the next couple of days. Where are we going? Uh, I'm going to go downstream. That away. That away. Hey, thanks, Matt, for doing, for doing this for me. So, yeah. That's 
Majority of the people that I canoed the cylinder spillway with have been in the industry more than 20 years. You know, these are people that have been to Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, the Congo, Egypt, Ethiopia. And without fail, everybody says that this is one of the most superior experiences in Africa. And that's mainly because it is so wild. And it is that sense of knowing that you are in the middle of nowhere. There's no airplanes that fly over you. And that's why we have to drive in tomorrow. There is an old airstrip there, but the airstrip's damaged. The plane hasn't landed on that airstrip for months. And that's why we have to drive for six hours to get up into, into that neck of the woods. And um, there's very few places in Africa on this planet when you, you can actually experience pure wilderness. It's as, it's as wild and it's as raw as you will uh, you'll see it. Um, it's become a lot wetter and I remember going into that area I was in that area probably about 15 years ago and, or even 20 years ago and there were no animals absolutely no animals because so it used to dry up you know there was one stage that the cylinder spillway didn't flow for 30 years so if an area is getting no water there's going to be no animals and what we've noticed recently there's been a sudden shift of water that is now heading to the eastern side of the Okavango Delta. So rumors have it that it's seismic movement and channels that have been unblocked um, some channels that have been blocked and, and that's the magic of the Okavango Delta it, it shifts all the time who knows we could have a big earthquake of 5.6 on the Richter tomorrow and then what happens to the water it goes the other way again and we'll never ever ever be able to do the cylinder spill and I think that's the magic of it is it you cannot predict it and when it's happening we gotta go and that's what we do This isn't so bad. I wonder if I'm going to get leeches like they did in African Queen. 
Water's nice and warm. It's like Spider Central here. They're everywhere. I'm sure Darlene is happy she's not here. Let's get rid of that Indiana Jones. Falling all over you. Looking for hippos. That probably clinches our uh, our campsite for the night then, right? Yeah. I see that they're moving around. Not too far away. A couple of kilometers. Um, we'll check. Um, there's no way really around here. I can definitely push another half an hour, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've never seen something that big. This is just carry on walking and show him that we okay. we're moving around. There's a hippo fight in front of us. We can't go anywhere. That leadwood tree straight ahead is where we wanted to uh, camp tonight, but that's where the fight is. We sighted it. A total of 15 hippos. We encountered our first hippo about 12 kilometers down. And from there, it just continued, didn't it? So 15 hippos in total. It scared me to death. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I've done that canoe trip a few times. And I think I'm one of the only people that have actually done the full length of the canoe trail a number of times. Most people have done from the TFC cut line down past Explorers, where there's a lot more understanding and knowing of what's downstream. And the handful of times that I've done it, there hasn't been many hippos. But this time... We encountered 15 hippos. If I knew there was going to be that many hippos, 22, we might have. We, I think we still would have done it, but I would have been sure I would have taken my boat up as a uh, as a backup, as a scout. So we would have sent them ahead to let us know what was happening, Careful, man. and then they could have. Reported to us, these are the locations. He definitely doesn't want us around. Looks like he's moving that way. Okay. I'll follow you. All right, that was the longest uh, hour of my life. Jeez Louise. All right, so Matt wants to camp over there with the uh, the dead leadwood is with the birds perched on the uh, branches. It means we got to get across the uh, the river, the stream, the spillway. Hippos were fighting downstream, so that's going to be our first sighting to see if we can get around the hippos that were angry last night. Well, that's part of the journey. I'll never forget whatever year it was 
we had walked into those lines at Cylinder Camp. I remember we had seen the Batelier and the, the Hooded Vulture. And we walked in there and that specific pride was an incredibly aggressive pride of lions. And I remember those two lionesses were coming towards us and we said, we need to go, we need to go. And uh, we had to walk fast because those lions were known as the crazy lions. They were known as, they were Puka pride. So they were renowned for being aggressive lions. And I remember walking back and so I think we're sitting around the fire that night and we were saying we've got to we've got to canoe this cylinder spillway we have to canoe it one day so I knew Wes was always up for it one day uh, last year was obviously we probably would have done it last year but again if last year was a normal year I would have just been fully booked on safaris and it's such a difficult one to coordinate because you never know when it's going to flow. So you can't book it for next year because it might not flow. So yeah, I decided, I know Wes is always up for adventure. There's not many people that have climbed Kilimanjaro. So after hosting me on Kilimanjaro, I definitely, definitely owed you one or two. And I just said, hey, the cylinder spillway is flowing. Are you up for it? And uh, Buya <laughs> said, I'm coming. And I think you are the, probably the first American to arrive in Botswana this year, if not in the last 365 days. So COVID allowed this to happen, otherwise everything would be full. And, and again, we might not even been able to get into the concession because people would be running a business and they would be activity and it's very difficult to to do off the beaten non-structured experiences when it's business as usual so i think just everything 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 just lined up perfectly and uh yeah it's not there's obviously not many people that i want to go and be in the outback with you know there's 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 a lot of people that a lot of people they won't even do it. I mean, there's there's not many people that are happy just to throw a couple of bags in a canoe and just go and live off whatever we've we've got. So I can't even think of anyone really. Um, might be one or two people in the UK, but yeah, UK. So literally, out of the database of ten thousand people that I have, I probably know of I would say two people that. And Wes is one, and they all live in different parts of the world. Yeah. He's a big one. Issues on the water. The, the only challenge that we have is, is hippo, I would say. Hippos, because last year we had a big flood, so the hippos are aware that the, the spillway is flowing, and, and last year they understand that there's a bit of water. So... They do remember prior to that where there's some good pools, where there's possibly good grazing. Um, that's why I went up three weeks ago to do a bit of a recce, just to get an understanding. Because the last time I was canoeing that whole river system was August. And the people up there have told me that there's, there's, there's hippo activity. And you'd never want to go into a, an area as wild as that blind.
got a hippo right there? I think we'll give her a little bit of room. Hippo okay. number 14. Or 15 because there's a baby there. So hippos are our biggest concern. They love the water. They feel safe in the water. But when a, we are in the water with them, they ultimately get nervous. So we're not going to be canoeing early morning. You're not going to be canoeing late afternoon because that's when the hippos are, are moving around. The water is it's the deepest I've ever seen it. It's, it's an incredibly deep. So we just got to um, look for the bubbles, look for the movement. And because we'll be canoeing in the warm part of the day, there's usually not that much wind. So if we do notice any slight movement, that's usually, hippos have to come up to breathe. And any slight movement in the water is going to create a slight bit of movement or ripples. And that will sort of make us aware of the hippos. Um, can't take that into consideration all the time because upstream you may get a herd of elephants crossing through and then you, you will see the ripples coming towards you. Um, and you may hear the elephants, so you think it's elephants, but there could be elephant and, and hippo in there. So bubbles. Well, look out for bubbles. Bubbles are important because as the hippos, hippos can't swim. They walk on the bottom and as they're walking on the bottom, they release a lot of these gases from underneath and, and themselves as they're blowing out the air. And we'll be able to see a trail of bubbles. So we'll, on the, on the hippo parts, we will be canoeing, but then when we hit the deep lagoons where you can't see the bottom, We'll just go around there just as a as a precaution. Crocodiles, I'm not that worried about crocodiles because this channel switches off and switches on all the time. The fish never get time to, to grow. So there's a lot of small fish which will attract small crocodiles, but they're not gonna attract big crocodiles. But it's not impossible. A crocodile can swim from the permanent water, Zibliange Lagoon, or the Panhandle, within a couple of days he can be there. But if they do arrive, they're going to realize that there's not a big food source of fish. Crocodiles are territorial, so they'll find their spots, decide that this is a great place for nesting, a good place for feeding, and there'll be no reason for them to move. So only if the water becomes permanent. And I think that's where we've got a bit of luck. And that's what makes this cylinder spillway unique, is that most other big river systems, or any river systems, or channels, even the Kwai River, which doesn't look like a big river, there's massive crocs in here. That's because the water's permanent. And that's what allows us to do the... I'd never canoe this. Never, never, never. There's too many hippos and crocs on this. And that's what allows us to canoe the spillway, is that a small amount of crocodiles and very few crocodiles. Um, I have seen small ones. Last year I spent a, a lot of time up there and I saw a couple of small crocodiles. But small crocodiles can get big. It takes them a long time. So yeah, I think our biggest concern is hippo. Um, there will be elephants, there will be buffalo, but we, we're in the water. Um, we may encounter some aggressive elephants. I have, I on time. one of my canoe trips, many years ago, come across a very aggressive female elephant who kept following us for, for at least an hour, trying to get to us. But every single time she came into the water to try and get, get us, the water was a bit, a bit, so the water was a bit deep for her. Um, and she was ultimately looking for a shallow end so she could get to us. And uh, eventually she had moved too far away from the herd. And eventually she, she moved back. So this is an elephant that's probably had a bad experience. And she, uh, she just wanted to take it up on, on us. <laughs> yeah. So
Hippos are, they got big teeth. Anything with big teeth, you want to stay away from. Um, they, they, if they do attack us, it's, or they, if they do feel they need to attack us, it's usually if we've surprised them. If you are um, canoeing and there's a hippo that's sleeping, and that happens a lot when the hippos sleep, it's an involuntary action to come up for air. So he could be fast asleep and next thing you going over him. And as you go, you go over him, he picks up there's something in the water, he panics and he's defending himself. And the way they defend themselves is with their big teeth. The bull hippos, canines are half a meter. And the neck muscles behind that and the, the power of that is aggressive and they'll snap a canoe in half. I was canoeing the Zambezi River two years ago and there was a group in front of us and we were the next group behind, we had one day behind and we bumped into these, the team at a campsite and the river guide said to me, do you want to you wanna have a look at this canoe? And I said, yeah, let me have a look. He said, but don't tell, don't tell your guests. I said, no, I won't tell them. And I went to the other campsite and I saw the canoe and it was literally chopped in half. And what happened is it was the guide's canoe and he was in front and they went over a hippo and the hippo came up and bit, literally bit the canoe in half. But as soon as he did that, he, he moved away. And three days ago, when they went to position the canoes for us, they bumped into a hippo. So they're out there. So a lot of young bulls and yeah, we just, we just got to be careful and, and respect them. So we just uh, boated from Dube Explorers all the way to Dube Plains. A couple of meandering corners, encountered about four hippos, and boom, we at the boat station. Right. Time and to explore. And they left us a car so that we could uh, pick it up. Yeah. Very cool. Happy days. Happy days. What are the five leading indicators that we're coming up on a hippo? Five Bubble, bubbles, leading. waves, mm. noise. A pool, ripples, yeah. ripples or waves, bubbles, warning call, water lilies, generally deep water. There All was right. another one. Teeth, teeth was the teeth, other one. Teeth, yeah. Okay, so can, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs>
So Matt, what's next? Next we're doing a trans Okavango. We take a boat from the top of the Okavango all the way down to the bar. Make it 10 days. 